Hi everybody. Uh, I'm getting ready to undertake quite a bit of a project here. This is my Rickenbacker. It's a 1988. I, uh, I used this with Ingve when I first joined his band. It used to be red. It used to be red and it also used to be a five string. I've converted it back to a four string basically because Rickenbacker's five string is just a, on a four string neck and the strings were too close together. Anyways, it just wasn't working for me. It's a collector's nightmare because I've already altered it so many ways. Uh, those who know Rickenbacker, okay, I love Rickenbackers, but the truth be known, they're really not that great. I love the history of Rickenbacker. There's so many great songs that have been recorded on Rickenbackers from Roger Glover, Paul McCartney, Chris Squire, Geddy Lee, the list goes on. So I have a soft spot for them. All right, so I was gonna use this on the last Bees tour last year, but the neck just isn't right. It sat around for about 15 years with no strings on it and apart and pieces. Uh, and I think it just never, it's just tweaked a little bit. I don't like the frets. Rickenbacker is famous for having no frets on a brand new instrument. The frets on this are the size of something that's been resurfaced about 10 times. It's really bizarre. So I'm getting ready to refret this thing. Let's go. All right guys, so I'm about ready to start this project. I'm a little nervous because, like I said, the frets are so low that my fret pullers uh, might have a hard time getting them. All right, we're gonna be using these, this is the tool you'll need to pull the frets, little fret pullers. These ones are from Stuart McDonald. All right, so I'm gonna get these strings off here first, obviously. Let's just go ahead and chop these off of here. We're not gonna use them again anyways. All right. Now, as I said, this is a Rickenbacker, but is it really? Seymour Duncan replacement pickups, hip shot replacement bridge. This is custom made brass I put on there. It's a bit thick and it's a bit heavy, but it looks super cool when it's cleaned up. After all said and done, is this still a Rickenbacker? It's the shell of a Rickenbacker, basically. Since I can't pinpoint the exact reason, I know that I need to level the whole neck. I'm gonna get rid of all this, uh, lacquer on the top here. I'm going to get down to the wood and get a nice flat surface to start with. I have a 2017 Rickenbacker that has the, the craziest hump in the neck and it should not be that way. Why Rickenbacker lets these things happen, I don't know. Alright, since I know this nut is going to come off, what I want to do, just in case, I want to score it a little bit there. I'm gonna score it a little bit there, just in case some of that lacquer cracks or something. It may be right there here on the front, just ever so slightly. And over here. All right, I'm just gonna give us a little tap first. Let's see. There. It's on there pretty good. All right, so I got the nut off now. All right, so I'm gonna keep this nut. I might not be able to use it because it's gonna be different, so. But I'm gonna keep it just in case. All right, so here's where the real challenge begins. These frets, there's not much to them <laughs> at all. So that doesn't give me a whole lot of room for getting my fret pullers around. They have a hard time gripping, plus the fact that there's a lot of lacquer on there. Let's start by scoring around the fret. Hopefully that saves some of the chipping that could happen. And you gotta be really careful too because you don't want to scratch the, the lacquer. Although in this case, I know that I'm I'm going to resurface the whole wood of the neck. All right, so 
I'm gonna heat my frets up first by using my soldered iron. So what you wanna do, you just wanna to touch the metal. You don't wanna to touch the wood, you'll put marks in it. But let's start heating this up. What that does is the heat will kinda of loosen the fret a little bit if there's any glue in there. And hopefully I'm gonna be able to get this out with not too much damage. All right, so it feels like it's getting kind of heated up. I want to try to try my luck at removing that fret now. Okay, I'm having a little bit of luck here. I don't want to chip the, the wood. I'm actually surprised it's it's coming out like like that at this point. Okay, wow, I feel really lucky. It didn't really chip, it's looking all right. I'm gonna flatten that down, I'm gonna take all that lacquer off. Second fret is out, not too shabby. Okay, third fret, not much trouble. Let's hope for good luck the rest of the way up. Oh boy. All right, coming along here, not so bad, not so bad after all. Who's that? Is this my little helper? Is this my refretting helper? How you doing, buddy? Okay, that's the tenth fret. Most of the cracks, it's a little bit, the tang's gonna pull some out. There's not a whole lot you can do, but scoring it helps a lot, and it's a lot better than I thought it was gonna be like, so. Well, wow, that's got tons of lacquer on it right there. Again, I'm gonna take this lacquer off, so I'm not too, I'm not too concerned about s scratches, but it's good practice just to do it right. Okay, heat it up. That just kind of loosens everything, either if it was glued or anything, it kind of loosens it up, makes it easier to pull out. Another dumb thing a Rickenbacker does, for some reason, they don't leave any room for the screws to hold the truss rod cover. So I've had to add that extra hole right there so I'm coming along. I'm getting close, guys. I got four more frets to go. Not too shabby. Okay, I'm down to the last fret. These high up frets here were really tight. As you can see, this one, <laughs> that did not want to come out of there. Oh boy. All right, one more to go. All right, guys. The hardest part, in my mind, is over. Getting the frets out of here, it didn't come out too bad. All right, that's it for today. The next video is gonna be leveling the fretboard and getting rid of all that lacquer. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time. Yeah!